Imagine a weapon that travels four times the speed of sound, yet can allegedly strike a target from thousands of kilometers away. This isn't science fiction, this is the reality of China's DF-100 cruise missile. First rolled out in a 2019 parade, it represents a major leap in military technology. But how is it possible to maintain precision at these blistering speeds? How can a missile screaming through the upper atmosphere correct its course to hit a specific building, or even a moving ship? The answer isn't a single trick. It's believed to lie in a sophisticated fusion of advanced technologies, a multi-layered guidance system that makes the DF-100 one of the most formidable cruise missiles on the planet. Today, we're breaking down how the DF-100 reportedly pulls off the near impossible. Before we get into the solutions, we have to appreciate the massive problem the DF-100's designers had to solve. Hitting a target at low speeds is tough enough, doing it at Mach 4 is a physics and engineering nightmare. At over a kilometer per second, the window for making course corrections shrinks to almost nothing. A tiny error in its initial flight path, a brief lost signal, or unexpected turbulence can cause the missile to miss by hundreds of meters. Think of it like this, trying to hit a specific window on a skyscraper while riding the world's fastest roller coaster, during an earthquake. The forces are extreme and the time to aim is virtually non-existent. At these speeds, the air itself generates incredible heat and pressure on the missile's airframe and the sensitive electronics inside. Plus, over long distances, small errors snowball into huge misses. A one-degree error in its flight path might seem trivial, but over a 2,000-kilometer journey, that missile would land nearly 35 kilometers away from its target. This is the tyranny of speed and distance. To achieve what some Chinese media sources claim is meter-level accuracy, the DF-100 needs more than a powerful engine. It needs a brain, a complex one that can think, see, and navigate in one of the harshest environments imaginable. At the heart of almost any guided missile is its inertial navigation system, or INS. This is the bedrock of the DF-100's guidance. An INS is totally self-contained, it doesn't need to see the outside world or get any external signals. Using a clever arrangement of gyroscopes and accelerometers, it constantly measures every turn, climb, and burst of acceleration from its launch point. It's essentially doing dead reckoning at incredible speed. The biggest advantage of an INS is that it's immune to jamming. Because it doesn't rely on external signals like GPS, an enemy can't easily throw it off course. It gives the missile a constant, uninterrupted sense of where it is and where it's going. But, the INS has a classic weakness, drift. No matter how well built they are, the components inside have microscopic imperfections. Over time, these tiny errors add up. Each second of flight, the missile's calculated position drifts further from its true position. For a subsonic missile, this drift is a problem. For a supersonic missile like the DF-100, that drift would make pinpoint accuracy impossible on its own. The INS provides a solid starting point, but it needs help to stay on track. This is where the missile gets its eyes. To correct the INS drift, the DF-100 needs to look at the world and figure out where it is. Analysts widely believe it does this using systems similar to TERCOM, Terrain Contour Matching, and DSMAT, Digital Scene Matching Area Correlator, found in other advanced cruise missiles. Think of it like a self-driving car that isn't just using GPS, but is also actively scanning buildings and lane markings to compare against a detailed 3D map in its memory. The DF-100 is thought to do something similar, but from a high altitude and at incredible speed. As the missile flies over pre-planned checkpoints, it's believed to use a radar altimeter or an imaging sensor to take a snapshot of the ground below. With a TERCOM-like system, it measures the unique contours of the terrain, the hills and valleys, and compares this profile to a digital map stored in its memory. When it finds a match, it knows its exact location and can instantly reset the INS, erasing any accumulated drift. A more advanced version, often called scene matching, captures an actual image of the landscape and compares it to a library of satellite photos. This allows for even finer precision, letting the missile identify specific buildings or features. Pulling this off in a split second at Mach 4 is a huge computational challenge, but it provides a critical, jam-proof way to stay on course. This system helps ensure that even if other guidance methods fail, 
the missile can still find its way by reading the Earth itself. The final and likely most precise layer in the DF-100's guidance is satellite navigation. While the US military has GPS, China has its own independent and advanced network, the Beidou Navigation Satellite System. Beidou is the ultimate fact-checker for the missile's journey, providing a constant stream of positioning data to correct the INS and supplement the fixes from terrain matching. The civilian signal from Beidou is already very accurate, but its encrypted military-grade signal is said to be even more precise. While the exact accuracy given to a weapon like the DF-100 is classified, it's this satellite link that likely provides the final polish to achieve its claimed meter-level precision. This trio of systems, INS, Terrain Matching, and Beidou, creates a web of redundancy. If an enemy jams the Beidou signal, the missile can fall back on its internal INS and its terrain matching eyes. If it flies over a featureless landscape where terrain matching is hard, Beidou can keep it locked on target. This fusion is what makes the guidance so robust. It's not reliant on a single point of failure, but a team of systems working together to get the job done. Of course, this fancy guidance system is useless without an airframe and engine that can handle such punishing speeds. While specifics aren't officially confirmed, analysts believe the DF-100 is powered by a ramjet engine, which is designed specifically for sustained supersonic flight. A ramjet has few moving parts and uses the missile's own forward motion to compress air for combustion. This is likely part of a multi-stage flight. First, a solid rocket booster is thought to launch the missile and accelerate it to supersonic speeds. Once at the right speed and altitude, the booster falls away, and the ramjet takes over for the long cruise portion of the flight. Reports suggest the DF-100 cruises at around Mach 4 for most of its journey. Some reports even speculate it might accelerate to Mach 5 as it dives towards its target. The missile reportedly cruises at a high altitude, possibly between 30 and 40 kilometers, reducing air resistance and extending its range. When you combine this speed, precision, and range, you get a weapon of immense strategic importance. Early Western assessments put the DF-100's range around 2,000 kilometers. However, more recent reports, some citing Chinese sources, suggest the range may have been extended to between 3,000 and 4,000 kilometers. While this longer range is still debated among analysts, if true, it fundamentally changes the strategic map. A 4,000-kilometer range would put major U.S. military installations in Guam within reach from mainland China. The DF-100 is reportedly designed to hit a variety of targets, from hardened command centers to air defense sites. It is also frequently cited as having an anti-ship capability, posing a major threat to large naval vessels like aircraft carriers. The missile's sheer speed dramatically shortens the reaction time for naval defenses, making it incredibly difficult to intercept. The missile is deployed from a 10 by 10 mobile launcher, making it hard to find and target before it fires. There's also speculation that an air-launched version could be deployed from bombers like the H-6K, which would increase its flexibility and range even further. The DF-100 isn't just another missile, it's a showcase of converging technologies. Its claimed accuracy isn't the result of one magic bullet, but of an intelligent, layered, and resilient guidance architecture. The brute force of the inertial navigation system, the watchful eyes of terrain matching, and the unerring precision of the Beidou satellite network are all believed to work in concert, with each system covering the weaknesses of the others. This weapon is a clear statement of technological ambition. It embodies a new aspect of modern warfare where incredible speed and surgical precision are becoming the ultimate currency of military power. The existence of systems like the DF-100 reshapes strategic calculations, forcing nations to rethink defense, deterrence, and the nature of conflict itself. What are your thoughts on the future of high-speed weapons? How will systems like this change the balance of power? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this breakdown insightful, be sure to subscribe for more deep dives into the technology that is shaping our world.